Howdy folks, AJ coming at you again, your resident vintage gamer. So today uh, I got quite a bit to talk about. Um, as you know uh, from my last couple of videos, uh, I was dealing with um, uh, my back. Uh, I had thrown it out and I actually popped a rib out and had to go to the chiropractor and everything. And it's it's still bothering me, but it's slowly I can tell each day that it's 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 improving and. Uh, and as luck would have it, uh, a couple of years ago, my wife, um, um, because I've always, uh, you know, had problems with, uh, you know, a stiff back and stuff like that. So my, a couple of years ago, my wife had bought me one of these, and I had forgotten about it. And as you can see there, it's a kind of a lumbar thing. But uh, with the, where this is hurting me, it's in the middle of my back and uh, up higher but I can still move this up and actually get it right where I need it to uh, to give me to push against that that rib that's popped out and uh, so I have to thank my lovely wife for doing that for me and I had forgotten all about it and she asked me about it and I, I of course had it and so that works perfectly now so uh, allows me to spend more time uh, at the computer and everything so a uh, couple things on the gaming front that have happened uh, since my last video, um, any of you that the, of, of the old older timer, uh, you know, role playing game players um, would appreciate this. Uh, the The original producer of Dungeons and Dragons and, and the other role playing games, you know, Top Secret and, and those, uh, was TSR, and it stood for Tactical Studies Rules. That's the one that was created by Gary Gygax, and uh, eventually got bought out by Wizards of the Coast and the name TSR went away. Well somebody has uh, resurrected the TSR name and is going to start producing products again, uh, gaming products under the TSR name. And the first thing that they've done is they have uh, they brought back um, a gaming magazine which uh, it's, it's, I want to say that it's it's a resurrected version of Dragon, um, which was the, the TSR, you know, gaming magazine back in the day. Um, but the art, because the artwork and everything is eerily similar to what Dragon used to be. But they're calling it Gygax ma magazine, which in my opinion is perfect. It's very appropriate. And it, it looks like... Um, They've already produced the first issue, and it looks like it's going to be geared towards um, us older role-playing game players, um, uh, our genre, you know, that uh, that play first edition, second edition, and etc. They may throw in some newer stuff in there, but it looks like it's kind of a throwback thing, and it's going to be produced quarterly. Um, I now, I, having said all that, I ordered mine um, a few days ago. And um, they may be having problems with the updating um, software that they're using that sends out emails saying what the status of your order is, uh, because mine has been saying awaiting fulfillment for several days. And on their Facebook page, other people have reported the same thing. So I, I have to I have to dis disclose that that I have not received mine, and I haven't seen that anybody has received theirs yet. So, um, but the person that uh, the lead person um, who is doing this goes by the name of Banshee. Um, I think her first name is Susan, but she goes by Banshee. Um, she has been responding on Facebook uh, about the issues, so it, it, it sounds like everything's going to get ironed out. But I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that that um, those issues were occurring at this moment. So uh, I'm going to put links in in the description here for everything I talk about today. So I'll put a link in here for Gygax Magazine and um, and the new TSR um, site. Uh, next thing is, uh, most of you are probably aware that uh, the latest uh, iteration of uh, Dungeons & Dragons video game is going to be released, and it's called Neverwinter. And it's going to be an MMO, and it's going to be, uh, it's confirmed that it's going to be free to play and free to download. There will be zero cost um, to play the game. You can download the client and you can play it for free. And of course, the way they're going to make their money is through their cash shop. 
you know, um, microtransactions, that type of thing. And they're having a beta, this is the first beta weekend, this weekend. And apparently the only way to get into the beta is that you buy a Founders Pack and for as little as 20 bucks, and they have them going up to $200. And uh, and that'll get you into the beta. I have yet to fork out the money. I just I just haven't pulled the trigger yet on whether or not I'm going to. Or I'm just going to wait for it to launch. So um, I have watched a couple of gameplay videos. Uh, Total Biscuit uh, did one, and um, MMORPG.com did one. I watched both of them, and they look. It looks very interesting. It's it's, um, uh, and I will put links to. Um, I'll put a link to Total Biscuits video. I know I can do that. I'm not sure I can do one for the MMORPG because it was a live stream. Um, <clears throat> so if I can find one, I'll put a link. But if not, um, you may just go to their website. I can, I'll put a link just to MMORPG.com and then um, you guys can try and find it from there. But uh, for Total Biscuits video, I'll put a link to it. Um, and uh, But the, the combat looks uh, very interesting. Um, it looks much more action based as opposed to toolbar based where you're looking down at toolbars trying to click different things you know everything it looks like can be done with your mouse and just a couple of buttons near your WASD you know they're, they're using the uh, they're using the E I think they're using E and Q and tab um, and then your mouse and that's going to be pretty much how your combat's going to go and you guys can watch the videos um, to, to learn more about that but it, it looks it looks like it's going to be much more fast-paced and, and, and so forth. So uh, that's happening this weekend. Um, and now this is going to be more for anybody that, that watches my videos that's kind of local here. Next weekend we've got two, actually two conventions that are going to be in the Salt Lake um, Provo area here in Utah. Um, one is called Salt Con. It's going to be a gaming convention for role-playing games, board games, that type of stuff um, in Salt Lake City. And then the other one is what's called LTUE, which stands for Life, the Universe, and Everything. And it started out as uh, a few years ago when they started it um, as more of an academic convention to talk about um, uh, science and astronomy and um science fiction and that type, you know, science fiction um, writing and and uh, creative uh, endeavors like movies and, that's, and all that kind of stuff. And they would talk about uh, gaming as far as science fiction and fantasy went and everything like that. But up until this year, they, had, they didn't really have a gaming area where people could play <clears throat> as well as people sell their, their, you know, items have by, you know, get a table and sell their stuff. Well, this year they're going to have that. They're going to have both. They're going to have a gaming area and they're going to have a, a vendor area where people can sell stuff. So uh, that one's going to be in, in Provo. So they're both on the same weekend, though. So, <clears throat> and the reason I found out about that is uh, I, yesterday I went to a local game store who actually has three, they actually have three in the area now, three different stores. They have one in Provo, one in Orem, and one in Salt Lake. Or not, excuse me, not Salt Lake, Lehigh. And uh, they're called Dragon's Keep. And um, they, I'll, I'll post their link uh, for their website also, because uh, I'm sure they do mail order stuff. <clears throat> but uh, I was able to find some some old older items um, that I was interested in that I didn't have in my collection. And the guy told me about these conventions. Um, so... Uh, for anybody that's local that's watching me, we got that coming up next weekend. Um, if you're not local, sorry about that, but uh, that's just what's happening. So, um, and speaking of the stuff that I picked up, I got some stuff at, at his shop, but then I also got I did get one thing through eBay that I've been wanting to get, and I already had one of these, but it was incomplete. It's called the uh, AC10. Um, bestiary of dragons and giants for Dungeons and Dragons and the reason that this is kind of a neat uh, accessory and it's 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 kind of rare to find it the way the one that I just ordered uh, because I got it complete on the one I just ordered um, is number one it um, it has a bunch of, uh, of encounters in here for giants and dragons that people that a DM could throw into his or her campaign at any moment you could just Fit one. If, if, if you had a group that was traveling, let's say, across, you know, uh, some terrain, 
and you wanted to spice it up, you could just look up in here and, and throw a dragon encounter or a giant encounter in, which is kind of neat. <clears throat> and then they have inside the cover here, they've got, kind of shows you scale for dragons and giants, what the scale would be, um, which is kind of a neat, kind of a neat little tool. If you wanted to visualize how big some, you know, a particular giant or particular dragon was to a human, um, they've got that in there. And this is what I had already. I already had all that. But what I was missing was this. And this, and this one is unpunched, meaning that all these little tabs are still in here. Um, so they do punch out. But this is a what's called a spell generator for uh, dragons. And what you do is you've got your spells on this uh, this side. It lists all the spells and everything. And you would cut this. It, it folds out, but you would cut it into, into the three panels. And you would cut the three panels out, and you would take the two blue ones, and you would basically tape them together. And then this spell sheet would slide in between those two, and you would have these holes that punch out here. And that would show you for, like, let's say, take, for instance, a small gold dragon and you would slide your uh, generator through based upon the die roll and it would tell you, that would let you figure out what spells randomly that particular dragon had. So it wouldn't be every time you did an encounter, if you wanted to do it, just throw one in on your, of your own, you would get a unique dragon with unique spells and everything. It wouldn't be a cookie cutter type thing. You would, you would get, um, you know, random abilities for this dragon, um, which is kind of cool. So and to find one unpunched where they haven't punched out the holes or anything like that is real, is pretty rare. So, and then the other thing is that they produced it. They put in an it was called an er errata sheet because when they did the printing on this uh, originally, they didn't get all the holes punched properly. And so as you can see, they're giving you instructions on on where to punch the additional holes that that are missing. So to find one of these. And this is in really good condition. Uh, to find one of these with all this uh, complete and unpunched is pretty rare. And I was able to find it on eBay, and I got lucky. So um, anyway, so that was uh, something I got. And then yesterday I picked up a couple of items at that uh, that gaming store I was telling you about. Um, and I'll just show you real quick. Uh, one was uh, the Dro of the Underdark. Uh, softback uh, bound book um, and the reason and this is Forgotten Realms but the Drow started in in the Greyhawk setting um, Drow, Drow, however you want to say it um, and uh, there was actually a set of modules specifically about the Drow um, that led up to the boss uh, Loth that was the queen of the of the Drow Drow, and um, <clears throat> this Forgotten Realms accessory here just gives a lot of it, it fleshed out and gave a lot more information about the um, the ecology and the um, the lore and uh, all that um, and the culture of the Drow, um, as you know, as well as giving it some specific stuff for Forgotten Realms. So I, I've, I've wanted to have that for a while. And then similarly, except this is dwarves, um, this one is uh, dwarves deep for Forgotten Realms, and of course it it you know it has specifics in here to Forgotten Realms, but it also once again goes into the culture of the dwarves. It goes into um, so if you're DMing and you're doing role playing and everything, it, it explains a lot about you know what life is meant to be as a dwarf. You know in in the uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, world, so I thought that was kind of a neat thing, and um, I was actually able to get a good price on that. And then um, I picked up uh, high-level campaigns, uh, hardbound book. It's basically in perfectly new condition. I mean, it's it's just like if it was you bought it new, and this is from '95. And the reason I wanted this was that when I DM. Um, I don't believe in retiring characters. Um, I think that if somebody wants to play their character, 
to whatever level I'm gonna I'm as a DM I'm gonna make that work I'm gonna figure out a way to keep them engaged and find content and make content for those people that are that are invested in that character and that book will allow me to do that because um, it basically tells you gives you guides on what to do with people as they get to 30th level or whatever you know and um, so I'm always looking for that kind of that kind of stuff so um, anyway uh, I'd love to hear from you guys if uh, if you if you want I would appreciate it if you guys could comment um, on any of this stuff uh, tell me your philosophies on high-level characters on uh, philosophies on uh, the bro dwarves um, you know gaming conventions anything we talked about you know uh, whether or not you're interested in the Gygax magazine and TSR coming back and all this stuff um, let's get some some dialogue going so uh, anyway uh, till next time we will catch you on the flip side